Now for our body. Oh, and the tries we save in the head can also go into the hands if we want more detail. Such as, you know, if at any time we want our character to play the piano. So, let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot. The base mesh that we have is the actual mesh that we we're using. So we can do two things here. We can fix the base mesh or we can just create our own. And, you know, that's, that's really up to you as an artist. You know, which one do you want to do? Which one do you think will be quicker? And, like I said, it's, it's really just a, a process you have to go through. Just like I, I did with the head. You could, you could remodel it and use this as a reference, you know, by just snapping to it. Or you can, you know, use it. Um, let me get off transparent, and we'll just add it. We just delete that head and, you know, start over. Or not start over, but, you know, retopologize the body. Because a lot of this thing, a lot of the stuff, detail we added isn't really necessary. And what is necessary is, like stated in the post and from an, another user, is, you know, we're going to need edge flows where it matters where we need to bend, such as the waist area here and the kneecaps. And we're really not going to need it for the ankles because I'm going to be wearing pants, so we're going to have a disjointed leg that's just going to be floating and rigged there. So that's going to be helpful. Yeah. Never said it would be useful to wear pants before. And our we can do the exact same thing with our hands, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, but we could, so we really wouldn't need this direct shoulder link up. But I'm going to do it anyways because, you know, why not? It's just... We don't need the feet connected. And let's see. The easiest way we could go about this... I mean, the legs. There's nothing wrong with the leg. We just make it a little bit bigger because we'd be wearing pants. How's the waist? Mm, it's wasteful. Ah, uh, that's a bad pun. Um, let's see. Might redo the torso. Right, redo the torso. I think the I think the arm and the leg are, are perfectly fine. I'm gonna pause the video. You know, fool around with the torso, see where I'm at. Oh shit. During this entire time, haven't saved. There we go. I would I would be in tears if it got corrupted. Well not really, because we made that really excellent reference. We first went over a picture and we're like, where are the key points? And oh, if you're curious how I did this. You know, it's not because I'm some magical guy who understands polygons to an extensive degree. It's because I looked over the details that I would need for a silhouette. You know, let's look at the big areas. A forehead doesn't need much detail. So let's draw lines down the center. And let's see, where would the next quad be on a side? Well, it'd be wherever my head bent. So it'd be right here. And let's look at the eyes. You know, we're going to need something for the eyebrow and something to go inwards. So right there. The nose is the area I need to spend a lot more time on, and I had to really figure out how it's going to work. And I figured if I put big enough polygons there, I can texture the nose to look like me. And that's what we're going to end up doing. The mouth is small and not really necessary for me. I'm just going to put this little under lip area here, and my lip, and we're good to go. And then the glasses, again, are going to be eight tries that we're going to have an alpha on with a double-sided map. We're going to assume our engine allows double-sided polygons. So I'm going to pause, and when I'm back, we'll hopefully have a fixed torso. So as you can see, I'm starting to flesh out the rest of the model. And I'm still doing this quick, you know, not really worried about, you know, major detail levels. I still haven't got the hands yet. I told you we were going to go over that, you know, on its own. And I'll show you a variety of hands, too, that you can do. And, you know, notice how I did the kneecaps. I did this because... The way kneecaps bend, they're going to be more stretching here, and there's going to be more collapsing here, and that's totally fine, because, you know, it's a video game. It doesn't have to act like real life. Uh, I'm going to put in some additional details, probably in the pants, so I can get the silhouettes of jeans that are, you know, soft khaki. And then I'm going to add some more detail coming out here to be the flaps of, uh, like, a, a button-down shirt that's not tucked in, which is something I normally wear. You know, and then we have the arm here, which is pretty much remain the same. I, I really didn't mess with it. You know, it, it's 
an arm shape or cylinder shaped like an arm. That's all we really need. Um, we're gonna go in and I'm gonna add some edge loops in the torso and the elbow. You know, similar to what we did with the kneecap. You know, as you can see, the the legs are detached. You know, you can see in the model. You know, it's it's only there to give the idea that there might be some sock there, and that's about it. Players won't get this low, and I'll fix this problem. So I'm gonna pause again. I'm gonna keep modeling. So just real quick, uh, since I'm going over the arm, I'm gonna have a short sleeve button-down shirt, just like any other game industry professional would wear. And I wanted to make a point that um, when we're working with double-sided materials, like, like we plan to in our theoretical engine that our game model is going to work in, we don't have to worry about backface culling, but we will still have to check the normals to make sure you know they're represented the correct direction for when we need to do things. Um, and I just want to show you, you know, this arm is, is detached like the foot, but this is a much better example because, like, it's, you know, detached. We don't have to worry about the polygons lining up, and it's really helpful when you're doing this because when we have the texture for the t-shirt, generally the outside of a t-shirt looks like the inside of a t-shirt. So when we double-side that material, it's going to look like the inside of a shirt. But let's say, you know, your game engine doesn't allow double-sided materials. How would you solve this? Well, you can just easily... You know, take these, and it, it's not going to cost too many polys to just take these in and then take them back, and then make these into a fine point. You know, merge collapse edges, collapse edge, and then texture this black, and boom, you have a shirt with a relatively thin edge. Just thought I'd point that out. You know, and um, make sure that. All I did was I scaled this up. Make sure that when you do something like that, you go back and you, and you reform the arm. Might even be better to take that point of the arm and just make them all come in at one vertex so I don't have to worry about them collapsing in. And I might do that too. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Anyways, I'm going to pause. I'm going to keep modeling. And I'll be with you in a bit. So, real quick, I was going over and I was starting to detail the tail of the shirt. And I realized this would be a good point to show you guys. So I'm going to have a shirt that isn't tucked in, and it's going to be hanging down. You know, it's kind of a normal fashion thing for guys like us who are overweight. So how do we do that? See, we can do it a couple ways. We can do it like we did with the arms, and we can just, you know, take these polys here and disconnect them and then, you know, make some extra area that's going to be hidden. Or, you know, what we could do is we could extrude the edges from here, and this is normally a very, very bad thing to do. And, whoops. Let me get that connection back again. And we can move it back here. And then we could form it up to be the shape we want. Now, why is this bad? Well, it makes non-manifold geometry. It makes a T-joint. That's bad. As you can see, like, it's already freaking out. Maya didn't know which side the normal was supposed to be on. But we don't have to worry about normals, remember. And we can disconnect this from the model, so we really don't have to worry about that either. So, let's go ahead and fix the normal issue, just so our tools work correctly. Now remember, if you're doing a high-poly character, don't do this. This is, this is bad. But, um... If you're going to make a low-poly character, you can do this simply because you're not going to worry about the normal information. And although the normal information is generally pretty important, it's not important for us right now. And as you can see, I'm actually not taking it too far away. I'm just having it hang a little bit, just so we have that detail of it coming out. And as you can see, this can cause some problems, too, because if we animate and it moves just a little bit, we're going to be pushing an ass through here. And that's not very helpful. So, we have a couple of options to do that. We can just make sure when we animate it, we put the necessary tries there to, you know, go around the ass. And that's probably what I'm going to do. I can show you how to do that right now. 
And I'm pulling it out a little bit right now, even though when when we rig it, it's actually going to be attached to the rest of the leg model. We're not going to have separate bones to come down here, because when we're making low-poly models, we, we really don't want to throw in an excess amount of bones. It's another reason we didn't do extensive facial animation. Um, so let's see. There's a couple things. Since we're hiding the butt, we can actually get rid of some of these verts. So that could solve our problem. You know, we still got the silhouette we need. So why not? Let's do that. I also widened myself up a little bit more. Because I'm not that thin. It's okay. I'm aware of it. Now let's push this back. Because a shirt will drape over your back. So it's not going to be skin tight. Although I do have a couple skin tight shirts. I actually have a shirt I like to refer to as the unicorn or bronco shirt. It's a button up, slightly rainbow-esque horse shirt. I'll take a picture of it later. You know, where else will the shirt drape? It will actually drape under the armpit, but... And this is a good example to explain why I pick this pose instead of a traditional T pose. So, when you're modeling, think about how your character is going to be moving. My character is me. You know, he doesn't flap his arms needlessly. There's very little reason for him to raise his arms way above his self, you know, for any significant portion of time. So, let's imagine me. I just walk around. I, I'm going to hit people with my sword. Might do it through a few spells and might run. So, really, this is the area I really don't care about. It's mostly going to be at my sides. This is more important. So, I put it at the maximum height it's probably going to be. You know, maybe a little bit higher than this, but not too much. And... I model around that area, because this is generally what it's going to look like. So, with that said, I'm going to get back to adding more edge loops around the waist, and doing the same thing I did with the kneecaps to the elbows. And then, oh, by the way, we have this little area here for a color I'm going to create later. But this should be pretty good for our character. I'll probably also extract these so they're a separate object. It'll just make it easier when I'm... Or at least, not a separate object, but make them so they're not actually connected through verts here. Make it easier when I'm m actually binding the mesh to the bones. Just a little bit. So let's see. How's our silhouette looking? Let me deselect everything. Now let me turn off... Uh, back face calling so we can see the back of those shirts. Yeah, put some fantastic luxurious hair there and that is me with club hands. So, we'll get started on that. 